So this video is going to introduce something called masking. I have a circuit set up here with two LEDs and two buttons, and the buttons are set up to toggle the LED state. So rather than holding a button down to turn an LED on, I click the button once, that will turn the LED on. I click the button again, to turn the LED off, and the browser's a little buggy there. Sometimes it registers more than one click. But again, I click the button once, that turns that LED on. Click it again to turn it off. Click this button once, turns this LED on, click that button again to turn that LED off. And that is fine if I'm using them separately, but the problem I will run into is if I try to turn both of them on at once, when I click this button, it turns the first LED off and vice versa. And that is related to how I have my code written with registers where every line where I am trying to just write a single bit to a register to turn that LED on or off, I am also overwriting all of the other bits in that register with zeros, which is causing the other LED to turn off. And I really don't want to do that. For example, to turn this LED on, I really just want to set this bit to one and not affect the other bits at all if that LED is already on. In order to address that, we need to introduce something called masking. So that is the link to the circuit you just saw if you want to open that up and play with it again. But now we're kind of going to go through this in PowerPoint slides instead. So my problem is that I want to control two LEDs on Arduino pins six and seven independently. So on my Arduino, I have pins six and seven. I know that corresponds to port D bits six and seven. And to set that up, I know that first I need to set them as outputs using the DDRD or data direction D register. So I set bits six and seven to one that sets those pins as outputs. To turn pin seven on, I can use the port D register to set this bit to one that turns this pin high and will light up the LED. To turn pin six on, I can set this bit to one, but again, the problem here is that I'm overwriting all of the other bits in this register with zeros, and that is inadvertently turning pin seven off. And I don't want to do that. I want to be able to control the LEDs independently without accidentally turning one of them off when I go to turn the other one on. So to address this, we're going to need to talk a little bit more about bitwise operators and look at how they work on single bits. So first, let's look at the AND operator. If I take one and AND it with one, I get a one. If I take zero and AND it with one, I get a zero. If I flip that, take one, AND it with zero, I get a zero. And finally, if I do zero and zero, I get a zero. So what you'll notice if you look at this is for these first two rows here, my first bit is unchanged. So I took a one, I ended it with a one, I still get a one out. I took a zero, I ended it with a zero, I still get a zero out. For the second two rows, the first bit is set to zero. So it doesn't matter whether I started with a zero or a one here. When I ended it with a zero, I get a zero out. So that property winds up being useful, and we're going to look at the same thing for the OR operator next. So again, let's look at how the bitwise OR operator operates on a single bit. 1 OR 1 is 1. 0 OR 1 is also 1. 1 OR 0 is also 1. And finally, 0 OR 0 is 0. So again, let's look at what that did to the first bit. In this case, the first bit is set to 1 if I OR it with 1. So here I started with a 1. My output is a one. Here I started with a zero. My output is also a one. So it doesn't matter what I started with. When I or it with a one, I get a one. And then for the second two cases here, my first bit is unchanged. So in this case, I started with a one. I still have a one at the end. In this case, I started with a zero. I still have a zero at the end. Finally, you can also do this with the exclusive or operator which is very similar to OR, but it's only true when one of your inputs is zero. It's not true when, sorry, it's only true when one of your inputs is one. It is not true when both of your inputs are one. So again, in this case, that first bit is toggled. So when you XOR it with a one, this bit one becomes zero and zero becomes one. If you XOR with zero, then your first bit is unchanged. So this one stays a one and this zero stays a zero. So in summary of all three of those operators, what do we have? If we AND a bit with one, we don't change it. We leave the bit unchanged. If we AND a bit with zero, we set it to zero. If we OR a bit with one, we set that bit to one. If we OR a bit to zero, we leave it unchanged. 
And finally, if we XOR a bit with one, we toggle the bit. If we XOR a bit with zero, we leave it unchanged. So we can use that information to set individual bits in a register to one or zero without changing the other bits. For example, say we have this as the value for our port D register. So bit seven is set to one, all the other bits are set to zero. And our goal is to make bit six high without affecting the other bits. Again, we don't want to do that just by using this command to write a one to bit six because that is overwriting all of the other bits with zeros. Instead of doing that, we can use masking. So we can write port D equals port D or 0B, 01, 0000. Let's look at what that's actually doing one bit at a time. To do that, it's a little easier to write these above each other. So here's our original value stored in port D, and we are oring it with this. So just go down one bit at a time. One or zero is one. Zero or one is one. And the rest of them are zero or zero, which is all zero. So if you look at this output line and compare it to your input line, you'll notice that bit six is the only bit that changed. Bit seven stayed as a one. All of the other bits stayed as zeros, but bit six changed from a zero to a one. So that accomplishes our original goal of making bit six high without affecting the other bits. You can also write this in shorthand notation if you don't feel like writing port D twice. Instead of writing port D equals port D or in this number, you can write port D or equals the binary number. So this statement is equivalent to this one up here. If you are more comfortable writing it out in the long form, you can certainly do so. If you wanna save space and not have to type as much, you can use this shorthand notation. Let's go through one more example using the AND operator. So this time, say I have port D, pins six and seven are already set high. And my goal is to make bit seven low without affecting the other bits. So again, I don't want to do this because there I'm writing a zero to seven, but I'm also overwriting everything else with a zero. So I'm accidentally gonna turn this LED off as well. I don't want to do that. I can use masking, but this time I want to use the AND operator. So again, we look at this one bit at a time. Here's my original value stored in port D. I AND it with this expression. So one and zero is zero. 1 and 1 is 1. For all of the other ones, 0 and 1 is 0. So if I look at this output line and compare it to my input, bit 7 is the only one that changed. This 1 stayed as a 1. All of these zeros stayed as zeros, but this 1 became a 0. And again, that was my original goal, make bit 7 low without affecting the other bits. And again, you can write this in shorthand notation. Instead of writing port D equals port D and blah, 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 you can write port D and equals blah, blah, blah. These two lines are equivalent. So the conclusion here is depending on whether you want to set an individual bit high or low, you can use the bitwise and and or operators to do masking, and that way you will only write to the one bit you want to change and not affect the other bits. And again, we didn't do an example with the XOR operator here, but if you want to toggle a bit so you don't know its state, but you know you want to flip it from either zero or one or one to zero, you can do the same thing with the XOR operator. So let's go back to our circuit now. And I am going to comment out all the lines that were just overwriting the registers and uncomment the lines that are using masking. Now, when I run this, we will see that the LEDs do not affect each other. So I can turn that one on, and I can turn this one on without turning the red one off. And again, this is because each time I click this button, the code is using masking and only writing one of the bits and leaving the others unchanged because I'm using this masking operator in here. So this becomes very important. We're just using LEDs and buttons here as a demo, but for example, when you're building a robot, and you want to turn one thing on without accidentally turning all the other things on your robot off or vice versa, you need to use masking to make sure that doesn't happen.